Watch me as I turn this rough sketch into this rendered illustration. Stay tuned to see more. Hello everyone, it's me, Tentabat, your average YouTuber that draws furry porn. Today, I will be drawing Diane Foxington from the Bad Guys movie. This is a spoiler talk video, so I will be discussing spoilers from the bad guys. So you're welcome to mute me if you don't want to be spoiled and still enjoy this beeping. If you're curious about my quick thoughts about the movie with no spoilers, please check out my previous video. Jeez, I just realized it was over a month ago I made that. When I said it'll take me a few days for my spoiler talk video to come out, I meant the several weeks. Uh, nonetheless, let's get into it. Now, I gotta say, this movie's visuals is really mwah, chef's kiss. I'd say the overall animation and style is the real star of the show, um, while the story and the substance really take a backseat. But honestly, I really don't mind too much you know, as an artist, sometimes you just want some eye candy. I feel like this movie really stylized the CalArts bean mouth, but in a very pleasing way. I uh, just thought it looked super, super charming. I also really liked their sort of anime style where they would have the little hash marks on their cheek when they grin. Again, so freaking charming. Reminds me of a few Miyazaki films or Ghibli films. Is it Ghibli or Ghibli? I uh, um, oh no, they're, you're gonna tell me in the comments. Well, anyways, again, uh, with the mouth features, I really like how they stylize the teeth when they talk uh, to like a blocky, chunky sort of style. And then they had this rounded triangle teeth, like spiky. I, I just thought that was neat. And I noticed for Mr. Snake, uh, I like how they animated his webbed mouth when he talked. Uh, while still, you know, being pretty cute at the same time. Uh, this is irrelevant, but I just thought it was cool that Mr. Snake's mouth was purple. That's an unusual color, but I find it very interesting. I don't know, just thought it was neat. And man, I love smears. Honestly, cannot get enough of them. I look forward to more films that use them in their animation. I'm glad studios are now realizing that 2D animation fundamentals are worth using. I'll be honest, in my class, uh, we never got to the smear lesson, so I kind of had to figure it out myself and play it by ear. But I think I'll learn about it as I do it. Learn by doing it, I mean, that's what I meant. Right now, I just kind of elongate the shapes or make it like uh, transparent. Sometimes you see smears where they duplicate body parts several times, like a roll of eyeballs. You know, maybe biblically accurate angels are just smears. That's an interesting thought. But yeah, uh, I'm a big fan of smears and I'm glad they're getting used more often. I, I really appreciate that. All right, enough about visuals. You already know that I really enjoy the visuals. Oh, and you can see in the speed paint, I, I still kind of struggle with the waving hands of a drawing. Uh, you know, I, I, I try still. I remember seeing a tweet saying, oh, they thought Mr. Wolf's design was too simple, you know? Uh, I think that's mighty alright. I mean, you don't want your wolf design to be too different and outstanding to the point where you can't relate him to the big bad wolf in the folk tales or stories. Now that I think about it, he could be a little more muscly to fit the big part of the description. Uh, I, I guess he's not really the muscle of the group. Well, not even Shark is. I suppose he's more of the brains of the operation, uh, more of a leader of the pack. I know Tarantula is the hacker, but she's not really the plan maker, I don't think. Uh, I could be wrong in the books. They could be true to the book and maybe design him similar to the book, or maybe not. I wouldn't have known. And you know, designing simple designs can be harder than designing characters with uh, more details and nuances. 
so I think they did a really good job here. Honestly, I don't mind any of the characters' designs. I think they're all very decent. Well, maybe except for one. Also, did I say I'd stop talking about visuals? Well, I meant I'll stop talking about the animations. Character design is different. I thought it was pretty weird that we have two fishes on the team. Like, we already have a water type. Shark. Couldn't piranha be changed into a different species? I don't even think they made any jokes about him being a fish. Uh, if anything, he's just the fart humor character. If we were gonna go with that uh, line of jokes, uh, maybe it would have been better if he was like a skunk or stink bug. Okay, maybe those animals don't have a bad enough reputation to be in this movie. I thought centipede, but that's another bug. Uh, but I feel like such an animal would have a different silhouette compared to the other characters, even uh, Miss Tarantula. So I guess uh, the shape would be kind of similar to Mr. Snake, so uh, I digress. I think they both look scary for very different reasons. Then again, centipedes aren't really misunderstood like snakes or sharks. Maybe their reputation is deserved. Maybe not. Uh, I'm not sure. i never seen one in real life. I only heard about them in YouTube videos. So I looked up stinky animals and one of them listed on Google is Millipede. I don't know. I, I don't think that character would fit in the movie. Millipedes are like the uwu babies of the insect world, I think, at least comparing them to centipedes. Piranha's character design might not be my favorite, but I'll be honest, I kind of warmed up to Piranha's character more than I thought I would. He's like a mix between uh, Dan from Dan vs. and Rico from Penguins of Madagascar. Well, maybe a diet version of the two. We got a few scenes of this character, but maybe not enough, or exaggerated enough, uh, I feel. Honestly, I think he had a few cute lines to him, where he's interacting with the group or, you know, just doing those one quips, uh, which made me like him. Uh, it's kind of sad that he had to be the fart joke of the whole cast. Besides that, I thought he was pretty neat. But yeah, I guess I just wanted more animal designs in the movie, considering the main characters are the only ones that are animals. I feel that's a very interesting design choice to make every main character besides one an animal and have them live in a human world. It doesn't really impact the narrative in any way. I think the only purpose it had uh, is that um, the joke was the bad guys wearing disguises and no one really recognized them even though they're completely different species. I kind of wonder if this was in the book as well. Honestly, I feel like the main characters as animals and everyone else being human is kind of a waste. They're not really saying anything in particular with this setup. I also think it kind of gives away who will be important in the story. Oh, there's a guinea pig and a fox. Guess we'll see more of them. Then it's less of a surprise when we find out a revelation about them. This kind of reminds me when I saw a Shark Tale review a few years ago and it poses the question, why make the characters animals when they could just be human and still have no impact to the story? Well, here's my proposed answer. Because it's fun. Yeah, because I can make punny jokes about what animals they are because they're furry designs and they're more interesting to look at compared to human designs, plus uh, variation between character designs as well. I mean, if you're not going to say anything about having your main cast as anthros and the rest of society as humans, you might as well just make everyone a furry. I, I just feel like the environment aka the characters around them could have been cooler and at least more various uh, with that idea. I know that means more work and variation in the background characters, 
but they had a lot of variation in their human design as well. Um, I think, uh, sorry, it's been uh, at least a month since I saw the movie. Maybe it's to make the audience relate to the civilians more? I'm not really sure. If you have any ideas about this, please let me know. Um, again, maybe there's something in the book I'm missing. Yeah, I think they should have just made everyone animals. But then they'll be compared to Zootopia, so <laughs> that was a great movie. Oh no, a good movie compared to another good movie. Well, I know one of them is gonna be looked at as a lesser, but it'll still be someone's favorite. Uh, yeah, I kind of wish they just bounce off that concept a little more with uh, he animals in a human society. Uh, kind of like in uh, Cats Don't Dance, where animals were viewed as lesser or more dangerous. Maybe they just didn't want to get into the racism or speciesism route. But then again, uh, Mr. Rolf did begin the movie by saying, Oh, he has to play the part as the big bad wolf. Oh, that's why you don't like me. But, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, anyways, I feel like I got better sucked into the movie after a second viewing. Uh, after everything is revealed, you see the movie kind of in a different perspective. And you notice some lines that foreshadow future events. One of my nitpicks is that uh, there are some parts that are like if you blink you'll miss it like how they first mentioned the crimson paw tried to steal the the dolphin statue beforehand but it was really never seen again or even mentioned again it was literally just two lines and not just in the dialogue but in the visuals as well like i remember in the first viewing uh in the crimson paw fight scene in the in uh the the police, the the jail, jail, prison cell area, um, or the scene where a single projectile hit two people, but I blinked and kind of missed how it hit two people, and I didn't know what happened. Uh, I only saw it hit one person, but after my second view, it turned out the projectile rebound from the first person, then to the second person. I know sometimes we want animation to be snappy and quick, but sometimes it can be a little too much. Yeah, speaking of being too quick, I think this movie could have really benefited if it had a, a longer runtime, uh, like perhaps a few more scenes added in. Like, I kind of wanted to see how the bad guys operate a little more, and maybe even see a few of the characters' hobbies, goals, uh, niche skills, niche likes, things like that. Anything to show more of their personality. Uh, so we could get attached to these characters and see their motives. Also, there should have been way more scenes of them enjoying the limelight from being good guys. Uh, we only got Shark being adored over with like one line of dialogue. Like, is it true that sharks can smell blood from a mile away? Uh, I think the answer was no. Uh, it also would have been nice if we saw more conflict between each member of the team. Or at least their feelings towards Mr. Wolf as he became a good guy. Uh, it was more of a wolf versus snake kind of thing and the rest just kind of followed. Yeah, with so many main characters, it's easy for some of them to fall on the wayside. Like, I'm really glad Snake got so much screen time uh, because I absolutely love Scalies and I love Snake characters. I really didn't expect it. Uh, but since he got so much screen time, I feel like we didn't get to see much of the rest of the team. Shark, Piranha, or Tarantula. Uh, if it was based on how much screen time they got, I would say Wolf and Snake would be at the top, Shark, Piranha would be in the middle, and Tarantula would be dead last. Uh, so sad. I think invertebrate characters are so cool. Uh, so, so sorry if you were looking forward to... Miss Tarantula scenes. Also, I noticed in like two lines of dialogue, uh, Mr. Snake said he molts uh, instead of shedding. Uh, snake, snakes don't molt, they, they shed. Uh, it's the tarantula who molts. Uh, my theory is that they said, said molt instead of shedding is because 
they didn't want to sound like he's shitting or something like that. Also, I feel like the movie didn't really show why the bad guys are scary. Yeah, Mr. Wolf mentioned it at the beginning. He's a big bad wolf in the stories, but no other character uh, mentioned his looks, nor does the rest of the gang get a comment about their bangs or scary appearance. Uh, as far as we know, they didn't kill anyone or threaten anyone except for Mr. Wolf when he went off on that guinea pig. Yeah, so it seems like the background characters are more scared of the fact that the bad guys rob banks and steal valuables rather than their actual appearance or features. Honestly, uh, I think if they weren't bank robbers or anything like that, uh, their community wouldn't really be, be scared of them at all. It sounds like Mr. Wolf's narrative of, oh, people don't like me because I'm, I'm the wolf is not really backed up by any sort of evidence. Uh, when we first get introduced to the main characters, they've already done crimes. Uh, we don't really know much about their past or anything like that. Uh, so it, it, it seems like people are scared more of their actions uh, than rather because they're animals. Again, since no one in the movie talks about how they're animals uh, and the people are not, it just seems... It just makes your mind wander. Like, I feel like something's missing, like some sort of revelation we didn't get. Okay, enough about that. How, how about Diane Fox then? I really like the chemistry between Mr. Fox and Diane. I really like the line, foxes and wolves aren't so different. I uh, wish we saw like other wolves and foxes so that statement can apply to other characters. Just just give me more furries. That's that's yeah, that's that's my my motive. I want more furries. Give me more characters to draw. Uh anyways, yeah, I think they're cute. I like how th they first met when Mr. Wolf was under disguise and Diane seems very smart and knows what's going on. And she could be pretty snarky about it. it it's very cute. And not to mention their chemistry is really nice to see, like when Diane gave Mr. Wolf another chance at being good or when she wanted to dance with him. I forgot to mention, but I really like the minuscule details in this movie. Like uh, like I said, that I thought it was cool that Mr. Snake's mouth was purple. I really like Diane's eyebrow piercing. It's such a small thing, but it, it can really show a character's personality. Alright, that's mostly what I got. Uh, almost time to wrap up this video. Um, maybe Wolf was the real bad guy in this movie. After all, he didn't even ask his friends if they wanted to be good or not. He only acted for himself. Also, you could be altruistic and still steal stuff. Uh, you could commit tax fraud while also having friends and a pet cat. Just look at Robin Hood. Wait a sec. Robin Hood? Foxes. Hmm. Well, anyways, that's enough of me rambling. Yeah, so I, I hope you really enjoyed this speed paint. Because here's the final images. Uh, I really enjoyed drawing this one, and I'm pretty proud I came up with such a premise. I imagine Diane using the grappling hook to see if she still still has it. Uh, but hijinks ensue. And yeah, I have her in a bunny pajama alt because I feel like she deserves it after her friends had to go through that. And yeah, I blurred out the dress version a little bit, but you can see the unblurred version on my other socials and art galleries. If you're 18 plus, that is. And I do have an even more sensual alt with Mr. Wolf on my Patreon as a Patreon exclusive. Uh, the $4 tier or higher could view it at their leisure. Again, only if you're 18 plus. Sorry, sometimes I gotta promote myself. Anyways, yeah, a lot of fun. Please let me know what you think about my art and any feedback you may have. Thank you in advance. Sorry if I got a little too nitpicky or some things I said didn't make sense, but you know, I, I just really like this movie, and I really like the tiny details I saw. And you know what they say, the devil is in the details. Uh, let me know what you thought about the movie too. 
I want to hear what you liked and disliked. I would definitely watch it as soon as possible as it hits streaming services or something. And that's it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching all the way through. I really, really appreciate it. And I like to give a special thanks to my patrons who are on screen right now. A very big thank you to my top tier patrons, Mainfall, Seven Dead Jr., Bolt Chaser, Crumpley, Crowns Knight, Nova Bone Z, Grimitis, Sterling, Lieutenant Skittles, and Zerum. Hope I said that right. And thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.